Hey, this is Carla from the Butcher Baby. This is George Corp from the Fisher from Canada Corp. Hey, this is Rex from Kill Devil Hill. This is Wednesday 13. This is Ash from Devil Dobby. This is Odorous from Water. You're listening to Rabbit Noise. On Rabbit Radio. Turn it up. Mike, thanks for joining us on the show. How's things been? Things have been great, man. Get, getting ready to launch the album, uh, go on tour, and just uh, just enjoy myself. Awesome, man. It's all happening, isn't it? Yeah, it's all good, man. It's crazy to think a, a year ago we were uh, we were sitting around wondering, you know, what this album was going to even sound like. And now, you know, it's about to be out. No, oh, it's it's awesome, man. Uh, you know, of course, you know, you band, the the contortionists are about to drop your fourth album, uh, Clairvoyant, on September 15, which is just around the corner. Um, you know, and a few of us have been lucky enough to hear it, but most fans have only heard, you know. Uh, the songs that have been released so far. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you'd be hanging to uh, have the rest of the world hear it as well. Do you, you know, is there a bit of a buzz within the band? You know, you're so close to releasing it. It's like Christmas, I guess. Yeah, it kind of is. You know, it's uh, you work so hard and you you work so hard on it for so long that eventually it's it's like when you say a word a million times it starts to lose its meaning so you start to question like is it good is it bad uh you know should we start over um and now you know it's finished we put some stuff out there it's got a great response and now we're just ready to to get it fully out there and uh just kind of in some ways it's it's a bit of a relief and yeah there's there's excitement as well i mean and it's a stunning album too it's phenomenal thank thank you very much no worries, man. Well, uh, of course, um, you know, I believe the band is also celebrating 10 years this year as well, which is pretty damn cool. I mean, have you guys got plans to celebrate that and the album release together somehow? I'm not, we haven't talked about it yet, but I'm sure there'll be some sort of celebration, you know, because that's, that's a, that's a pretty good feat, you know, not many bands make it that long. Especially these days, man. You know, like financially it can get pretty tricky out there. You know, to uh, keep it rolling with families and jobs and everything yeah, yeah. like that. So yeah, yeah. not for me. It's been a it's been a crazy ride. But you know, it's one of those things where I tell most upcoming musicians ask me for advice on like you know how how can I you know get to where you're at, and you know I'm not even to where I want to be at yet. But the to me, it's always been about you know persistence. You know, if if you're persistent and you work hard and you're you're really serious about what you're doing, the opportunities are going to be there. You know, you're going to fail a million times more than you're ever going to succeed. But once you get that little bit of success, your foot's in the door, you know, and then you can kind of just work your way in. That's why I think people sort of, they get a couple of failures and then they just throw in the towel, you know, and they don't push through it. Exactly. They, they, get, they get complacent or, you know, there's the little bit of success they get is good enough and, you know, more power to them if it is. And then other people just get very discouraged about the, the failures that come with it. Yeah, it's a shame, really. Uh, but what about yourself? You mentioned before, you know, you're not sure where, you know, you want to be. Like, what's what's the end goal for you? I mean, you've kicked a lot of goals, dude. I mean, what's... Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, the, the end goal, essentially for me, just in life, is to be, you know, happy and healthy, which I'm those two things. But, you know, there, there's other goals I want. There's, you know, there's bigger bigger arenas I want to play. There's there's other bands I want to play with. And, you know, until until those goals are done, you know, then then once that happens, you know, I, I'd like to be able to tour a little less. You know, I'm getting older, so it's, it's nice to have a little bit more time off. And, you know, continue to make music and try new things musically. Absolutely, man. And, of course, like, uh, you know, you mentioned that about, you know, is, is there one band that's on your bucket list where you're like, you'd be satisfied with that? But you'd play um, I, I don't know if there's, like, one band where, like, I play with them and I'm like, I'm done. Like, I'm out. <laughs> you know, you guys got to look for a new singer. Um, but, you know, like, Tool. Tool would be an amazing band. Uh, the guys got to tour with Deftones uh, just before I joined. So that'd be, you know, and we're good friends with those guys. So we're just kind of waiting for that to happen again. Um, but I think it's always neat when we get to we get to tour with bands that I grew up listening to. That that's the most rewarding. Definitely, definitely, man. I mean, have you had had an instance where you've uh, 
you know, bumped into someone that you've, you know, grown up listening to and you've sort of had that moment? Yeah, I think the biggest would be the Deftones. Like Steph Carpenter, the guitar player, he's like he's actually a big fan of our band. So it's it's kind of weird because we run into him here and there, and he's he's just I don't even get a chance to tell him how much I love his band, and like I had his poster on my wall as a kid. <laughs> it's just him always talking about our band, and it's the cra- it's the weirdest thing to me. But he's the the best guy ever. That's amazing, man. Like that, I mean that that's a sign that you know you've you've done well, really. I mean, when your heroes are coming to you, going, I love what you're doing. You're like, uh, must be like an out of body experience. It is. It's surreal, man. It's 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 really surreal, and it's rewarding. You know, it's one of the most rewarding things you can do. There's not, you know, you can make money doing anything, but to to have somebody that did shape who you are as a musician, you know, extend a compliment in your direction, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty satisfying. That's unreal, man. That's awesome. And uh, of course, with uh, the new album. You've teamed up with uh, Jamie King again this time around, and you know it sounds like you guys really have a great working relationship. Uh, apart from that, what is it about Jamie that keeps that collaboration going from a vocalist point of view? Um, well, it's a good question because I was actually the one who pushed to go to Jamie for language, and that's because I'd worked with him with a previous project. And for me, Jamie is well. First off, he's one of the best human beings you'll ever meet. He's 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 incredibly smart. He has a great concept of what we want to do. He's insanely humble. And it's just a good work environment. And, you know, if I walk in the studio and I'm not necessarily, you know, feeling creative that day, he has a he has a very interesting uh, trait where he can pull uh, the creativity out of me and he can inspire me with his ideas. And that's, you know, that's a priceless thing to have in the studio. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that it's just their job. Do it again. Push for record. Yeah. You know, but it's when you do yeah. meet those people that can really push you. I mean, it's nothing like it, hey. Yeah, and you know, and and now we've worked with them enough that you know we have this certain workflow that works for all of us. You know, and there's no stress in there. Like we, we've all dealt with very stressful album uh, processes before. So with Jamie, there's no stress. He's super easy going, and, you know, it just works. He's got a brilliant ear. Oh, absolutely. And it sounds it sounds amazing, too. I mean, this is one of the best uh, yeah, quality. Yeah, his, his work speaks for itself. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Um, the artwork is also pretty cool, too. Can you explain the album cover and, you know, how that ties into uh, the album? Um, so the album is very much about the loss of something, something, someone, uh, however the listener wants to, to take it and apply it to their life. But um, essentially, it's supposed to be a very grim album cover, which is why it's void of color at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's supposed to, and it initially started off that it was supposed to represent a, a grave site of sorts. And then it kind of turned into, our artist kind of did his own thing with it and took that and spun it into his own interpretation and when I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is perfect. You know, it fits. The imagery, the imagery just fits the music. I, I think it's it's an awesome cover. I mean... Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, the artwork really struck me, especially. Um, it looked cool on vinyl, too. Are you guys going to be dropping it on vinyl? Yeah, so right now, I don't know if there's any left, because we usually, we usually do limited runs of vinyl, and they sell out pretty fast. But we'll, we'll do some more. We, we usually, every six to eight months we'll do a limited pressing of new colors and artwork and stuff like that. But yeah, we I think we just did two thousand. They might be sold out by now. Bummer. <laughs> I'll to keep an eye out. Yeah. They, they might not they <laughs> might not be though. Don't take my word for it. Definitely look into it and, and do your own homework on that because I've been wrong about many things before. <laughs> oh, I will definitely. I definitely will man. Because that as I said, man, the artwork's awesome. It's just it looks mad to just display, you know what I mean? You know, it's just one of those albums that you don't want to, you know, put in the shelf. It's it look awesome, like even framed. So yeah, yeah that's what exactly. we put. Pro, we are, you know, the match music, but also can stand alone on its own. You know, mm. it doesn't even need music for it to be striking and interesting. Oh, it's unreal, man, unreal. And uh, of course, 
you've toured with so many bands over the years, like, you know, Dying Fetus, Flesh Coat Apocalypse, Textures, to uh, even our own Sleep Makes Waves. I mean, you know, all they're all different in, in their own way. And you guys have to, you seem to have a pretty open mind when you hit, you know, who you hit the road with. Yeah, I mean, we're just, we're just open to anything. And our music kind of covers a lot of space sonically. So, you know, we just kind of gear our set list towards whatever tour we're doing. But, yeah, we're, we're open to do anything, man. We just like to play music and play it in front of people who are going to listen. And that's that's usually the goal. And in regards to those bands that you have toured with, um, has there been one that's made the biggest impression on you in terms of the way you approach your own performances? I think all of them, honestly. Because it's... Because we're touring with so many drastically different bands that, like, you know, when we tour the Sleep Makes Waves, it's one of those things where you, you hear these soundscapes that you're making, and you're like, wow, I love, I, we got to do some stuff like this, you know? And then, and then you go out with, you know, Tesseract, and you go, we got to do some stuff like this. And, you know, it's, it's crazy because we're always in, influenced and inspired by the people we go out on tour with. You know, it's, it's one of those things when there's something about seeing a band live that, that just resonates more with us. So, and we get to see it every night for a month to two months. You know, all, all the bands play a, a massive role in the direction that we shape our music. Who have you become the uh, closest with, would you say? Like, who's your, your bro band? Um, there, there's a lot. Um, Between the Bear and Me is a band we toured with a, a lot. And, you know, we did... We shared a bus with Tesseract for a month and did a month in the States as well. Um, Periphery is another one of those bands because they just, there's, there's almost, it's like between the Barrett and me and Periphery are the two bands who have gone out of their way to kind of lift us up and help us get more and more exposure. And that's, that's, you know, that's priceless as well. That's, those, that's, that's a, an act of kindness that they don't necessarily have to do, but they've always done. And it's, it's, you know, very much appreciated. They're good dudes, too. Oh, amazing dudes. Amazing dudes. And then, you know, you, you mentioned Sleep Makes Waves. Those guys were a blast. You know, they came over and did our headliner tour in the States, and then they brought us to Australia. And those guys are some of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in your life. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, they, and it's, it's awesome. Can we expect maybe you guys to team up for a tour down here? That'd be more fitting. Absolutely. I think that'd Absolutely. be the way to do it. Yeah, we... we we love coming down there. Honestly, it's it's one of our favorite places to go. Actually, so we're hoping it happens again soon. And you know, no matter who it is, who it's with, you know, we'll love to be there. Uh, hopefully, you know, it's with a band that we enjoy thoroughly. So you know, we have we have friends in other bands that we haven't toured with that are from there too. Like I've been friends with the Dead Butter Circus guys for I don't even know, like. Six years, seven years, something like that. My previous band did a tour in the States with them, and those guys are, to say, I, I keep saying everybody's the nicest people you ever meet, but those guys really are. Those guys are some of the best human beings. Well, uh, I definitely hope it's soon. Um, you know, I'd like to see you guys. Me as well. Man, like the, the Trifford in Brisbane would be amazing to see you guys in. I think that'd be, uh, I'm going to put my money on that. That'd, that'd uh, be uh, real. Unreal. Well, uh, dude, thanks again. I know. I think it's Saturday where you are. <laughs> thanks for, is yeah, it? it is Saturday, yeah. <laughs> yep. Sunday here. <laughs> um, thanks for uh, you know taking taking the time to have a chat on a Saturday with uh, with us, and I hope to see you guys soon. And uh, go out there and kick some ass. Hey, thanks for having me on. All the kind words. All right, take care.